Like, if it was a bit before COVID, but there was this big uh, Barney in Birmingham a while ago where there was this primary school, wanted to teach the kids about gay relationships. And a lot of the parents of the kids were quite conservative religious Muslims. They didn't want that. And so there were these protests, weren't there, outside the school. Gays on one side, Muslims on the other, shouting at each other. And all we had to do when we were talking about this to my right-on friends was go, hey, who's right? Oh, no, oh, no, please. No, don't make me choose. I'm going to look bad either way. No. Muslims, gays, Muslims, gays. <laughs> Why can't you sort this out yourselves? <laughs> okay, um, okay, who do I not want to piss off? <laughs> Muslims win. I mean, <laughs> the gays don't rise like that, do they? Who would you rather be kidnapped by, ISIS or Queer Eye? That's a simple question. <laughs> You spend five days with the fellas from Queer Eye, you just leave feeling really confident. Like, oh, yeah, I will ask her out, actually. Thanks, <laughs> I've been holding myself back all this time. I don't know how you did it. You find out you're having a baby, you've got decisions to make. Do you, uh... First one is, do you want to find out the sex? We decided we did want to find out the sex. Not because we wanted to, you know, play along with these archaic gender stereotypes and paint the nursery pink or blue. We just wanted to know if we're having a girl, obviously we'll have to keep trying till my wife bequeaths me a male heir. You know, nothing... <laughs> nothing outdated. But then you've got to decide increasingly for our generation whether you want to throw a gender reveal party. Now, yeah, it seems more of an American thing. You've heard of these things. It's just insane. Americans are going to the 20-week scan and going, right, everyone, to the, to the ammunition store, to family, meet me at the nearest quarry. I have an announcement to make. My baby's got a dick. People have died. It's insane. People are dying. I mean, when we found out, we just sent a WhatsApp message, just with a WhatsApp group message, you know. I don't know, maybe it would have made more of a fuss if we were having a boy. But, uh, Joke! He's a joke, show. Obviously I'm joking. You want a girl? You want a girl? Boys are done, man. Fuck them. They're all creeps. You don't want a boy. Creeping everyone out. Nah, 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 nah. Nah. Get that kid away from that woman. It's a walking hashtag, for Christ's sake. You can't do that anymore, you know what I mean? Hey! I don't care if you're hungry. Cut it out! It's optimistic raising girls now, isn't it? It's all about empowerment, you know? You say to them, you can do whatever you want to do when you're older. And you mean it! Best time to raise a girl in history. You can be whatever you want to be. More complicated raising boys, you know? You say, hey, listen, son, I want you to respect women, learn about consent, but also here's a phone with every porn video ever made. Good luck! I trust you. I trust you to make the right decision. No, you can use it to send a dick pic to everyone you know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. It's tough for both, I think. It's tough for both young people nowadays. The phones aren't making it easier. You know, you're already hopped up on hormones, you know? All this Me Too stuff. It's, it's tough for the young people, I think, on both, on both sexes. It's tough for young boys, hopped up on hormones. You know, it's hard for a young man to know if a woman is genuinely flirting with him or she's just polite. That's quite a hard line for a young man, isn't it? You're going, oh, oh, does she want to have sex with me or is she just fulfilling her duties as a vicar? Dare I make a move in God's house? <laughs> but obviously, much harder for women. Of course it is very hard for a woman to know if a man is a sex pest or, or, or he is just Mediterranean. Very <laughs> hamsy people, it's a fine margin. Hey, it's a me too. You know, you've got to be careful. Some cultures, I'm just saying. The ugly truth is that, you know, everyone, as individuals, has got different boundaries, you know? Hard to draw them along complete gender lines, isn't it? You know, like, uh, and quite often, you won't know what your boundaries are in a bedroom until someone pushes them, and then you either have new boundaries or they snap back to where they were. I'm aware it's been quite a classy evening so far. I don't want to lower the tone. But um, <laughs> the first time I was rimmed, okay? The, the first time I was rimmed, uh, she was Scottish, obviously. Um, uh, that's no coincidence, is it? I, godless, filthy people. Uh, 
I mean, it makes sense. If you start the day with fried haggis and arseholes, a fucking palate cleanser. <laughs> Probably the healthiest thing she'd eaten all day, you know. <laughs> so acute is the health crisis in parts of Fife that a rectum of mine is was close thing to a Barocco he'd ever seen. But listen, <laughs> listen, enough is. My point is, and there is a point. I didn't know I liked that until she just started doing it. I was like, oh, and then my boundaries changed. So much so that for a good couple of years there, rimming was like the bare minimum, the first base rimming for me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'd go on a date with a girl, she'd go for a kiss good night, I'd be like, eh. Like, eh. Oh, I'm sorry, your majesty. You know. 